Uh, I would like to thank uh, Rach Rachna Bookstores for having us here and Sizure. And I'm looking forward, of course, to the musical composition. Um, this is my first visit to Sikkim and uh, Gangtok and I'm so enamored. I think that always happens, right? You come away from the crowded city and the hills, the beckoning hills, the silence. So I wish I could have stayed longer in, in, in Gangtok. I'm here only for just two days, or, as in three days with a workshop tomorrow. So without uh, wasting much of uh, anyone's time, I'll get started because this is going to be only for a half an hour reading. And I'll try to weave in a story uh, because I'm a short story writer and my first, my self-identity as a writer comes through short stories and uh, poetry is like the next thing that happened more unconsciously. That's why I write in free verse and uh, I have recently taken to writing Haibun which is uh, an intersection of prose and poetry with haiku but I think even if I write novels and I'm writing one I'll always remain a short story writer so probably these are all you know lyrical short stories that have cheated themselves into a poetry. All right, so um, one of the narratives that uh, have always I have been uh, uh, under or obsessed with is of a girl from a small town to a city. So uh, that is one of the narratives that have formed formed my my narrative. It also forms the narrative of the characters that I write in my short stories. Those characters always have a backstory of being from small town to city. And uh, I lived in Kalyan, so this is a poem from there. Also that uh, coming from a small town to a city and the city of aspiration being Bombay, um, I always felt like an outsider to begin with and uh, I sometimes still feel like an outsider. The only difference being Earlier, I did not like being an outsider, but now I like because uh, it's almost a panoramic view of uh, the city and it's almost sitting on the balcony seat. So it's a privilege to be an outsider now. But when I initially came to the city, it wasn't. It was very, uh, it was like, you know, what an outsider feels, not at home or everything being too new. Okay, so this one is knotted inside me. At the time of my birth, my small town Kalyan did not have a library. It had no road rage, few beggars, one defunct traffic signal at Murbad Road and fewer cars. Horizontal buildings silhouetting the sun in shanties, chawls and cottages. Its outline gianted and dwarfed with self-sustaining jobs of Kirana Walas, primary school teachers, factory workers, dentists, general practitioners, cycle repair shops, and a small bank, let's not forget, on Rambag Lane. It was tone deaf to career ladders, six sigmas, hierarchies, MNCs, pecking orders, filled with Pawalas, Mohammedans, Hindus, Bawas, North Indians, South Indians, non-Catholics, non-Hindus, non-Muslims, non-Dalits, and non-Brahmins. The ice factory owner, the mayor, a smuggler, a customs officer, were the rich. Their bungalow gardens, terraces, compound walls sprinted over by well-fed dogs, pressing against our imagination, mostly during New Year resolutions. The Sindhis lived in a neighbour town, with plenty of gold and goods. In the year of my sister's birth, some of their buildings collapsed in crumbling cake in blood and crust. There was one gang war in Kalyan, one Anglo-Indian killed by a Goan goon on a night road, a gunshot running through his race history legacy, and a schoolboy murdered in cold gang boy rage. I with the, with the other girls were bottom felt, walking through the college corridors. That was all we had before I left for the city. But the town I had left behind, like shoes outside a temple, multiplied around me a thousand times. Thank you.